Hey, I've played Sea of Stars to 100% completion. I love it and I've done a review. But I want to dive deeper into the sea of stars. I, I understood that reference. I want to look at the main characters and rank them. So, my criteria. I want to factor in each character's story, background, their impact on the storyline, what they're like in combat and how badass their abilities are in terms of usefulness and visual design. It's all fun and subjective. Have fun. Let me know who your favorite character is in the comments. I'll try to read and reply to you everything. Okay, first up, Beast or Best. I'm not sure how you pronounce his name with there not being any voice acting. I'm gonna go with Beast, just purely because his ultimate is a reference to Altered Beast. From your he's the living glass golem and a late surprise addition to the party. And that's primarily the reason why he's at the bottom of my rankings. We just don't get the time to develop with Beast. But I did really like how Beast was really passionate about doing the optional arena challenges and he even leads the charge through them. And kudos to him for making the sacrifice play to resurrect Gal, someone that Beast hasn't even met before. So I thought it was a pretty sweet moment when the two finally meet at the end of the game. He might be at my bottom ranking, but I still like Beast. For one, he's the only character who isn't human-like. He's got the most unique design and he transforms to take on new shapes in different situations and he makes good use of those transformations in his ultimate skill. I love how it's even called, Altered Beast, a little reference to the Mega Drive game where you can also transform your character. Zail, the Solar Blade Dancer. Now being one of the two main characters you can choose to play as from the start of the game, outside of the intro to the game, Zail and Vilya don't have a ton of personality, at least compared to the other party members. This could be a design choice. In a lot of stories, the main character is intentionally designed to be bland so that the reader or gamer can more easily project themselves onto the character and imprint their own thoughts and feelings onto that character and immerse themselves deeper into the story. That's perfectly fine, but the only problem is there's two main characters and you have to choose one to assume control of. The character that you don't play as is still in your party and feels bland. It tasted just bland, just, just, just horrible. Yeah, I totally just reused that clip from my review. Zale may have been a bit bland story-wise, but for me, he was still someone I nearly always had in my main party. His solar powers were really effective against Dweller minions, and his fireball area of effect was super effective at quickly taking out groups of enemies. Rashan the Immortal Alchemist I thought it was an awesome surprise when you climb to the top of the water dungeon and find the very narrator of the game's story, Rashan. Did not foresee him becoming a party member and an awesome one at that. I like this guy's backstory and ties with the Fleshmancer. His ultimate skill, the ability to transform into a great eagle, was a gift from the Fleshmancer in the past. His ultimate really reminds me of Final Fantasy Summons. Rashan transforms into the Great Eagle, soars into the clouds and rains down his alchemy potions on enemies and he also heals the party. Probably the best ultimate in terms of usefulness and versatility. You can't handle my potions. They're too strong for you. And just in general, he's pretty useful in combat. You got his magic and poison attacks, and I made a lot of use of his ability to heal the party. Towards the end of the game, Rashan leaves the party, but leaves behind a clone of himself who can't speak. I really didn't like that. He has nothing to say or contribute to the story till the very end. I guess it could be worse. He could have just fully left the party. Hey, trying to grow the channel, mainly RPG focused, but I want to increase my subscriber count because that's the key to getting early review copies of games. By the time I get my videos out, everyone's already moved on to the next new hot game. So any subs are an amazing help. Thank you. Valia, the Lunar Monk. So Valia was the character I chose as my main character, so extra points for her. Again, same with Zale. There's not too much to say about these two in terms of personality, but Valia was at the core of my main party. Brilliant Luna base utility. First off, I love the Moonerang ability, where you can bounce a moon spell off enemies back and forth. There's something really satisfying about this ability, especially when it reaches peak velocity and you're just spamming the deflect button. She also has the Luna shield ability to heal the party and create little moons which completely block the next incoming attack. That was really useful in boss fights. Just a really awesome, versatile character, and I love her design. Now I love the concept of Gaal, a warrior cuckoo heals the party with his food and wields a cauldron lid like Captain America with his shields. I, I understood that reference. I think his ultimate skill is visually the best in the game, where he summons in the sleeping dragon he awakens with his cooking earlier in the story. 
It can be a little bit too front and centre and sometimes leaves all the party members in his shadow. I want to say he's got the answer for every situation, but he's not entirely written as a Mary Sue. The Elder Mist emphasises that he needs to mind his limitations, which ends up being his downfall and he ultimately dies. But just before he dies, we get a little arc to the game I really like. Garl uses Rashan's borrowed time elixir to delay his death by 24 hours. And in those 24 hours, a lot happens, and he opens the path to another world for the rest of the party to continue without him. These extra 24 hours of borrowed time do leave you feeling empathetic towards him, and we normally hear a really catchy, upbeat version of Garl's theme. But as this is all going on, we get a remixed version of his theme that feels a bit more sad and exhausted. Now, if you go the extra mile and unlock the true ending of Sea of Stars, you get to go back in time and prevent Garl's death. And I think this was executed quite well with Roshan secretly setting a window of frozen time for this opportunity. You can make the argument that resurrecting Garl does take a little away from the story and the impact of his death. But to be honest, I like it and I like how it was executed. All of the party slots were even full without Garl, which is usually a giveaway if a character is coming back. But the cargo slot becomes a proper party member slot when Garl rejoins. A nice little attention to detail in the user interface I picked up on. I love the contrast between going after the final boss with and without Garl. Just when you think everything will be the same, Garl does what he does best, jumps in front and centre, provoking the Fleshmancer and changing the direction of the story. The only character left, Sere, the portal assassin. She is my personal favourite character, so she's a pirate but secretly a portal assassin in disguise who is actually secretly a cyborg from another world. As we go through the story, we learn that the baddie stripped her people's souls from their bodies, and they were remade as immortal robots. She eventually reveals her true self and pulls off her cloak. You can see that she only has half a face, and I found that pretty shocking and brutal. It's kind of scary to look at. And we get to visit her hometown, and it's just really depressing speaking to all the other miserable cyborgs. She's the character I personally felt the most empathy for, and I was rooting for her to get her revenge so Sarai's ultimate skill has her calling her pirate crew and the screen is bombarded from her ship. I really like the visuals of the ship and the storm of green colours, but I'm not sure I'm as big of a fan of her pirate crew coming on screen. It's a really slow process and well, if the crew are over here, who's manning the ship? I guess it's the ghosts. She's a solid party member, really useful kick ability to delay enemies, and I love how she uses portals. Those are my Sea of Stars party members ranked. Don't take it too seriously, let me know who your favourites are in the comments, I'll try to read and reply to everything. Peace.